Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're doing an AFCON reaction to Group C and Group D, guys. Wow. Craziness, man. Craziness. So, like I said, guys, remember to hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button, guys. I want to, we're going to keep things simple. The like target for today's video is going to be 10 likes. 10 likes. If we can get it 10 likes, I'll be greatly appreciated. And remember, guys, tomorrow, after the, um, at around 5.30, maybe 6 o'clock, somewhere in that time frame, we'll be doing a live stream tomorrow to break down the entire AFCON group stage and also do a preview for the round of 16. Okay? So I hope you guys can join me for that. Anyways, without further ado, let's go and get started. So we're going to start with the first game we got here is Guinea, Nil, Senegal 2. I don't really have a whole lot to say, to be honest with you guys, for this game and that Senegal were the better team. They were the much better team for the course of the game. Guinea, for me, really didn't create any great goal scoring opportunities. Gourassi did start this game, and you could tell the guy wasn't clearly at his best because obviously he didn't get any shots, and he struggled, and obviously he was taken out to the 60th minute. Obviously, um, Guinea were cautious in that, hey, we, we, you know, we'll let him start, but we're not going to play in the full 90 just because he came back from injury. So, of course, we need, we want to make sure he doesn't get like a relapse or something, you know? But, yeah, I mean, um, for Senegal, man, they were just fantastic. They were just fantastic on the day. They completely controlled the game. Uh, Guinea had their moments here and there, but really not on anything big opportunities. They had that really good chance on the 67th minute, but yeah, they didn't get a single shot on target. Get us well, actually, they had one shot on target the 93rd minute, but yeah, other than that, there wasn't really anything. And um, I, I, I that Mane miss, <laughs> that Mane miss was dreadful. I don't know how Mane missed that because he rounded the goalkeeper cone and he somehow couldn't put it in the back of the net. And if it was on target, it's a goal. I mean, the goalkeeper is out of his line, so there's no way he would have missed from there if it was on target. But, yeah, I mean, I just think for Senegal, man, um, great, great set piece there. You know, um, I believe the it was a great header. Sex scored the header there from the set piece from the corner. And then the second goal, nice, nice goal there. A nice assist there from Sadio Mane to India to finish it off to make it 2-0. So, I think for Senegal, man, they have to improve with their shots on target, though. That's kind of one area of concern I do have that um, they were clinical on the day. You know, but... um. You know, it's that's a that's a good improvement though because I remember the last Afcon they were not very clinical. So this Afcon they have been clinical. I think they have been the most clinical team in this year's Afcon. Uh, but like I said though, they're gonna have to improve on their shots on target efficiency because this is kind of sad though. Having twelve shots, only two on target, is a kind of sad in some ways. But yeah, like I said, not really a whole lot to say here. Guinea finished third in the group, and we'll get to why they finished third in a bit. And as for Senegal, they topped the group with nine points, and they'll be playing. Likely a third place team of either Ivory Coast, I think. Yeah, I think they'll play a third place team. It's, we'll find out tomorrow exactly which team they play against. But yeah, um, they could potentially play against Ivory Coast, which would be very, very interesting. And for me, like I said, before we move on, Senegal, for me, have been the most impressive team. I think they have been the best team in the AFCON. But just because they have been the best doesn't mean they're going to win it. Let me make this clear, guys. Senegal, just because they've been the best doesn't mean they're going to win it. I'm going to repeat that right now. Because in terms of football... You have to get you, you want to you want to get better as the tournament goes on. You don't want to peak too early. And Senegal had they peaked too early, the time will only till the knockout stage. Moving on is Gambia two, Cameroon three. Uh, let me start off and saying this right now with Cameroon. I'm not impressed. Yes, I know they got the win, and I still am very critical of this team. And I was dissing this team a lot in my predictions. I said that this team would get grouped, and even though they didn't get grouped. I still feel like this team still needs a lot of work, you know, and I feel like Rigobert's song, he still needs to improve his tactics, but he did one thing correct. And I got to give him full credit for this is that he benched Andre Onan. He benched Andre Onan after the disaster class he get he had against Senegal. It was the right decision because sure. He wasn't at fault for the goals, but he reacted so late. He reacted so late. You know, you, you got to give him that, you know, and as for Cameroon, you can tell the game plan was all about the crosses. That was their entire game plan in the, this game is that whip in the cross and hope they can score from there. It's a very basic elementary school tactic, but I mean, it worked for them. So, and I will give Cameroon some credit and we'll get to them in a bit. But yeah, anyways, so what a goal that was from Toki Kambi. Great, great set piece there. And Kaduya, I think, got the assist there. Great, great set piece. Great header. And 1-0. No. And at this point, I'm like, okay. Because in the first half, I believe Gambia were dominating. Gambia were the much better team for the course of the first half. Cam um, Ondano had to make a lot of good saves in the first half. And you could see Cameroon really struggled to break this um, Gambian team down because the first half they were abysmal. You know, they had their chances there, to be fair. But um, for the most part, Gambia were the much better team. Amagre um, had that only one big chance there. Um, and then the second half, man. 
the second that Matt Cameron started to come alive, they started to play well. And then all of a sudden, Gambia score. Gambia score. It was a very nice goal. I believe the goal goal scorer is Jalou. He came off the bench. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. He didn't come off the bench, but the assist girl got came off the bench and got the goal. Nice, nice goal there. Cameroon defense was all over the place. And then Gambia made it 2-1. And at this point, I'm like, oh my God, Gambia. Because I, when Gambia took the when Gambia scored, it was all Gambia. Gambia had the momentum. They were pushing. They made it 2-1. And at this point, I'm like, okay, can they actually do this? And then the goal scorer, Cole came off the bench and scored. And at this point, I'm like, okay, they're going to do this right now, right? Unfortunately, Gambia played so attacking and so offensive that Cameroon decided, you know what? Let's be smart here. We're going to play counterattack. We're going to be playing the counterattack. And they did just that. And they put a great cross in. And the center back put an own goal. Gomez puts an own goal there. Really, really unlucky for him. And then Wall scored a 91st minute from a corner to make it to make a 3-2. And then Gambia even equalized themselves in from the corner from the set piece. But it was actually a handball. He literally did the hand of ball for what Maradon did in 1986. And that's how the game finishes. 3-2 was disallowed. And from that point on. So I think if you're Cameroonian, you must feel very happy with this win. But at the same time, defensively, Cameroon still have to improve. Because Odano had to make a lot of good saves in this game. And I, I'm almost positive that if Onana played this game, Cameroon would have won this game. I am I can almost guarantee you that, guys. If Onana plays this game, Cameroon don't win. Cameroon don't win. And as much as I criticize them, as much as I don't really want to give them credit, you have to give them credit that they have the mentality. They have this belief in them that we're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And even if they're well not coached, they're terrible and not really great to watch, they still keep pushing. They have the champion mentality. And remember, guys, this is a team that has the that's won the AFCON the second most amount of times in Africa behind Egypt. So you can see there's a lot of heritage and a lot of, character from this team and they're going to be playing against nigeria which we'll get on to they're going to be playing nigeria in the round of 16 which is going to be a very interesting match as for gambia i think they i think they got too excited i think the heat of the moment got to them and i think they were trying to push for the win but reality they should have just tried to preserve their lead you know because when you preserve your lead then they'll be able to sit back because all the hard work gambia did to make it 2-1 was all nullified so if I so if I'm like Tom Saint, Saint Flit, I would have tro- told the team to be more defensive, and I think it was a big big mistake Gambia did trying to push for the win, trying to make a three one when in the process it actually hurt the team, you know. So Gambia meant it's very disappointing, but you got to give them a, you got to get they put a good account of themselves in this group. You got to give them credit because this was a very difficult group. You had the defending Afcon champions, you had the 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 um the team that's won the second most amount of Afcons in history, and you have a Guinea team that have Gorasi. So. You have to give Gambia credit in the sense that even though they didn't pick up many points, they at least scored two goals. You know, because coming into because after, honestly, after what I saw in the first two games, I wasn't even sure Gambia would score two goals. I I said one at most, and I could I didn't even believe they could score two. So you have to give them that massive credit they were able to do this. But unfortunately for Gambia, it is what it is. And um, I want to shout out to some players from Gambia. I thought Coley was fantastic on the day as a center back. I thought he was fantastic. Um, Musa Barrow was not really effective. Jalo was great. As for Cameroon. Obviously, Nick Kodo was amazing. I thought Donna was pretty good for the most part. Um, and yeah, those are the players I want to shout out. So for Rigger Breath Songman, he lives to fight for another day. And Cameroon, man, if they knock on Nigeria, we're going to have to... If they knock on Nigeria, man, I, I, I that will be that will be incredible for them. So we'll see what happens in the round of 16, of course, in due time. But yeah, man, for Gambia, man, very, very disappointing. But hey, they at least can bow their, they at least can bow with their heads held high. Moving on to the other game we got here, it is Angola 2, Burkina Faso, man. Guys, Angola, I think, is the real deal. I underestimated my predictions. I believe I put them last in my video, and I want to do a wholeheartedly <laughs> apology because, my goodness me, man, this Angola team is unbelievable. And you know what I re- learned from this team is that this team has character. This team has belief, and this team fights to the very end. This team doesn't want to give up. And you know, I also learned this team is difficult to break down. They don't concede a lot of goals. This team is rock solid defensively. And I think for Burkina Faso, they didn't really create any great goal scoring opportunities. They have their chance. They, I think they underestimated in, um, Angola by the fact that they didn't start. Um, they started Kabori at right back, which was kind of odd. Um, obviously, they had to start Triori, but 
my thing is that I think Kapoor is just better as a winger. I don't think he's great as a right back, you know. But um, you know, I think for I think for Burkina Faso, actually take my word a sec. I think for you have to give credit to Engel. They were fantastic on the day, amazing performance from them. And I think you have to give them so much credit because what they did in this game was unbelievable. Defensively, they were so solid. As for Burkina Faso, they like I said, man, if we look at the stats in particular, they had 20 shots, three on target. They were abysmal in front of goal. They were abysmal. And for Burkina Faso, man, they were disappointed. And coming into this game, guys, they had scored in 15 AFCON games consecutively. 15 AFCON games consecutively. For them to not score here is unbelievable. As for Angola, man, unbelievable, man. That first goal, man, what a clever set piece that was. Freddie with a great, great assist there to Mabula. And Mabula scored, man. Great, great header in to make it 1-0. Then the second goal was... And then uh, and um, Burkina Faso kept pushing. They kept pushing. They had their chances in the second half. You know, the goalkeeper had to make some saves. As you guys can see right here, I think the goalkeeper made some saves here. I believe there's that one save there. If I can remember correctly. Yeah, I think, no, not this one. Where was that one chance I'm looking at? Was it this one? I think it was this one. Yeah, yeah, I think it was this one. I don't really remember. But um, there was a great chance for um, Burkina Faso to get one back, to equalize. I think it was like the 70th minute, if I remember correctly. And and then, obviously, the second goal was scored. Second goal was scored. Great, great goal. Coming off the bench, Zinni, rounding off, you know, being very smart with his dribbling and putting in the bottom net to make it 2-0. So, I think for um, Angola, man, that you got to give them massive credit, man, because this team is solid defensively. This team is a team to look out for. And with this result, guys, they officially topped the group. And Burkina Faso, man, they finished second place in the group. And, guys, with this result, Angola is going to be playing the third-place team of – um. What is it called? Um, third one of the third place teams. As for Burkina Faso, they'll be playing against a Group E winner, which, I mean, given how this Afcon go is going, you we we don't even know who's going to top the group for Group E, so um, that's gonna be interesting. It could be either one in Mali, Tunisia, South Africa, or in Namibia. So I mean, for um, for Burkina Faso, man, very disappointing for them. Uh, like I said, man, I think um, Kofi didn't really have a great game. You could kind of argue as a fault for the second goal. He made a he parried a straight for the rebound for Zinni to score. But yeah, I mean, for um, Burkina Faso, man, maybe they, maybe, maybe starting, um, maybe putting Kabore right back kind of throughout the entire thing. Maybe you should have put Trior in the left and Kabore at right wing, um, because I thought Kabore was fantastic against Algeria, so maybe that was a big issue. But yeah, for Burkina Faso, man, maybe the player selection cost them, but, but I just think it's, I don't think it was really player selection. Be honest, I, I mean, maybe some partially it is, but I think it's more so Angola just took the game with them, and I think Angola was like, you know what, you can't underestimate this, us, so. Yeah, we're going to move on now to the final game. Martinia won Algeria now. Guys, I, I'm i in utter disbelief. Martinia actually pulled this off. And Algeria, we're going to have to have a real conversation about Algeria, guys. I might have to do a video about Algeria's downfall, guys. We might have to do a video about this. Because it's been two AFCONs in a row with a group stage exit. And don't forget, they didn't even qualify for the last World Cup. Algeria, man, it's a, it's a huge, it's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, and I want to let's actually, you know what? Let's let's start with Martini. Let let's give praise to Martini. They 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 deserve it, man. They deserve it. I thought they were fantastic in this game. They scored that lovely goal there, Delali, and the thirty seventh minute, great great goal there from that tight angle to score from that corner is amazing. Look at the finish of the thirty seventh minute, and you look at the chances that Martini had. They had seventy shots, seven on target. They had a really, really good chance, especially in the second half, man. Around the stoppage time, they had so many chances to finish off the game, but they didn't. And you had to give them credit. And I look at this team, and you know what's actually crazy, guys? Amor Abdu, if you guys don't know him, he is actually the coach that actually got Comoros to the round of 16 in the previous AFCON, which is absolutely insane. And remember, he did, in that team also defeated Ghana in the group stage. And I look at this team. This team is fantastic. We like the likes of Koita, Ane, Thiam, Gasana. I thought Niese was fantastic on the day. He made a lot of good saves. Um, and especially when Algeria were rampant in the second half, because Algeria kind of took the gear of the first half. They're like, eh, nonchalant. They didn't really try that much. But the second half, man, they had a flurry of chances. They had a flurry of chances. And um, Algeria's go Martinez goalkeeper is like, you know what? You're not going to beat me. You're not going to beat me on the day. And you look at the saves he made on the day. Like, look at this one here. This was a crazy set. Mandi, uh, then I think Buendia had a really good chance. Yeah, this so on 60th minute was a crazy, crazy save he did there. And uh, Mondi as well with an attempt. So, yeah, man. Onas, man. I mean, you have to give credit to Martinia team. This is unbelievable. They're playing Cape Verde in the next round, which is a great, which is really, really interesting for them. Because that's kind of like an underdog clash. 
As for Algeria, man, I, I, I think Malmadi has to be sacked. I'm sorry. You cannot be out in the group stage twice in a row and not even make the World Cup to mention. And the thing with Algeria was that they didn't play well in this game. They didn't play well. You know, sure, the second half, they came alive to some extent, but really that first half was so nonchalant. And you know what's crazy, guys? Algeria played well for the previous two games before this game and the first half, but the second half was disastrous. The second half was absolutely disastrous in both games, and which is the reason why they conceded those goals. This game, it was kind of the opposite, where first half, they played really bad, they conceded the goal. In the second half, they were they they gave everything they could, you know. And some players I thought was really really bad on the day. I think Zariski Zariki he's been a fantastic player for Feyenoord. He didn't look great today. Hussam Awar, this is a player that I I is really really talented, really praised a lot. Didn't really do much in the first half. He was actually taken off. Amora well, wasn't that effective today. Onas and it was actually interesting because Belmonte actually made the changes that a lot of Algerian fans were wanting because Algerians didn't want the likes of Bel. Benfali, Bentaleb to start, and these kind of players. And the, he actually did those. He actually did that. And Fegali to now start. But he's, and, and I'm sorry, guys. Riyad Mahrez is finished. Riyad Mahrez cannot be a starter for Algeria anymore. I'm sorry. Riyad Mahrez, I, I'm i even getting to the point where, is he even good enough for the squad? Like, I'll be honest with you. This guy, for me, has been terrible for Algeria for a while now. And it's been worth noting. And Algeria needs another striker. Buendia just isn't it. Buendia just isn't it, guys. Like, I'm sorry. I know he was great those first two games, but you got to get someone else. Eslamani, I'm sorry, he's not good enough. Algeria needs to build for the future. I think Gori is a player they could have had, but obviously um, Gori was one they were hoping to select, but I think um, he got injured. So Algeria needs to find some more depth. Algeria needs to find some more depth. And it's really a shame because Algeria made silly errors in the previous two games. This game for me, they actually played quite decent in the second half, but you could tell that Mauritania just wanted him more. Mauritania just wanted him more. They wanted to do it. And Algeria for me just lacked the character. They just lacked the composure. They lacked the the attitude. They lacked the they were not too. I'm trying to figure out how to say this, but they didn't. They let the. They were not as serious as they should have been. They were a bit too nonchalant. They were a bit too relaxed. Whereas Martinia, they took this game to that because remember, guys, Martinia just needed the win. Both teams needed the win here, and Martinia with this win are through to round of sixteen. So you have to give them a massive credit, man. So for Algeria, man. Very, very shameful, very embarrassing. And yeah, like I said, guys, we might have to have a real conversation, guys. And maybe we'll have this a future debate channel, guys. Which down which national team downfall has been the worst? Algeria, Germany, uh, Brazil, and Italy. We might we might have to have a combo, guys. We might have to have a combo. But that's anyways, that's for another time. So I hope you guys did enjoy this review, guys. I know it was a bit of a long pre review, but I needed to I needed to elaborate and needed to talk. About this. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember guys to like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below, man. And yeah, peace out, man. Mm -hmm.